So my name is Elia. I'm gonna be here. We're gonna. Hi, my name is Eliab. I'm from Web, from the research team. I pretty much grew up in the cybersecurity field for the past six years. I grew up with the offensive, offensive cybersecurity as leading projects against companies, penetration testing, external, internal attacks, of course. And besides that, I'm what we call the ethical hacker, just doing fun stuff for companies and get paid for that, so pretty nice job. And today, we, today we're going to go pretty much forward on API, what are the challenges it exposes to us in our days, going to go through some case studies uh, to see how and why API is different in our world of security. And of course, at the end, if you have any questions, we'll have time for that. So when we talk about API security, we have we need to put in mind that API is different where, from web application. And we need to understand why it's different. And there are three keys for the differences. That we go, we're going to go through them, and hopefully we'll understand. So a lot of people think that API and web application are similar or the same. Of course, we see API in a web application and, and things like that. However, it's it's different. And the, main, the first thing is different is in the architecture where we see a API. So there is another slide just for that, but just in general, the API has different architecture and it has been because of the shift, how we handle API and how, how many servers we have. And today, today we have the microservices that requires us to move to API by design. The attack surface is different. And the attack surface is different, meaning that the vulnerabilities that we exploit and look for in API are different than the one we see in, that we see in the web. In the web, we see a lot of SQL, XSS, and things like that. And all the client side, of course, attacks that are pretty much limited in the API. However, it's in the API exposes us exposes us and give us a new world such as logic by, bypass of logical attacks and we'll see some of them and the third one are the traditional defense system that we see such as WAF that it's really good for for web application unnecessary works for API and the main reason is that WAF was by design for web application as his name tells us but it's not good for API. And we will see in the, in the case studies why it's different. And, uh, and the main thing that the WAF is different is WAF is searching for certain criteria to block them. And API that necessary had the same thing into block. If, if we don't look directly to see if their payload of XSS and block them, that WAF is really good. We'll, we'll search and find different things. So by, when, it, when we talk about the architecture, so on all days we were in monolithic architecture, pretty much had few endpoints in, few endpoints out. And once a year moved, we passed to microservices. And for a, for a very good reason, we moved to microservices. However, the moving to microservices made, us the, made the use of API pretty much reliable on that because we wanted to, to get things fast to provide our customers a good experience. However, it's really hard to protect against it. We have much more endpoints in and out and not, all, and not always we understand where each one goes, what is the business of the, of the API, what kind of data is going in and out. So understanding that, we can understand that the idea of it, the challenge it gives us, it's much more harder to manage and secure everything when you have a lot of endpoints in and out. And of course, when we talk about about it, uh, about security risk assessment, well, we need to understand the things that impact that, and that pretty much based on the business. Once we understand the business, and business. We can't, we, 
now I understand how we need to protect it. And of course, we need to make sure that we know what are our assets, what are our actors, who is going to use it, who are the players, what are your interfaces in and out, and what are the actions we expect to see happen. Okay, if we see the bank, it will have a different completely risk assessment if it's a grocery store. All the things, everyone will have a different, different impact on it. But by understanding that, we can understand the business. And ha having to understand the business, we can understand how, where it's going to be the hard, where if we will attack, it will harm them the best, the most. So as you can see, you can take a chart and start to draw things, start to draw our assets, uh, start to draw our players, understand what kind of action we expect to see. But the problem starts when, it, when we start to draw our trust boundaries. Where do we actually trust them in the world with API? Everything is connecting to everything. Everything talk, talk to everything. And if we take it a step further, if we talk about every, every, every smart thing that we have today, if it's smart TV, a watch, car that need to talk with everything. And if we'll take the car, for example, we have, you can talk with a phone to open it, see the maintenance, see what I, what everything is going in on it, traffic type that need to talk to the car. So everything is rely, relies on the API. So it's really hard to, do, to start to draw the trust boundaries where we want to protect ourselves and how. So this is the key challenge where we, where we see ourselves and start to understand why it's hard to protect against API and why hackers can exploit it to find their vulnerabilities, to find the points where we don't cover ourselves and those areas, the blind spots that we have, we'll try to get in. So traditionally, when we talk about WAF and API Gateway, and just put in mind, when we talk about, the, uh, you see on the left side, the OS top 10, this is OS top 10 for API, not OS top 10 for web application, for a good reason, OS top 10 decided that API needs to have own criteria and all vulnerabilities because of the design of the API. So this is not a web application. If it was a web application, probably we'll see much more green stuff on the WAF. And the reason, as we said, that WAF thinks about one and zero. Okay, if there is a payload of XSS, it will block it. If it's not an XSS, it will go forward. But if we'll take for example, the first, the first one, the BOLO one, broken object level authorization. Let's say I'm trying to access, okay, I guess that a lot of time when you browse or see, there's like you're trying to browse through a resource and then you have something equal to. And if I'll try to access four or five, six, I might get access to it. So the request is a legit request, has a token, has everything in it, it's still an attack. The WAF from his side, it, the request is valid. Not, none of the things that are in the request should be alerted by the WAF. And as well as going for the API gateway, the API gateway is helping us a lot to manage our API, not necessarily helping us to protect them. So those are kind of the things that we wanna, wanna make sure that we're protected against it, against them, but we are not sure that the traditional ways are supporting it. They need to remember when, uh, when expecting WAF to block stuff like that, the logical things, it's like expecting something that the firewall will do something else, okay? Like a fish to fly. It, that, it wasn't designed to protect it. It was designed to protect our, our web application and it do, does doing a great job in that area. It didn't meant to do something and protect our API. And if you'll go forward, yeah, they, they're doing a great job, of course, in injections, bad like, data, excessive data exposure, or logical bypasses won't be detected by them because everything is valid, everything is, is correct, and it won't alarm us. However, someone will get all the data of our customers, probably we can shut down our company and say goodbye. So we have kind of approach how we, how we vision the best protection we can do on API. So it starts 
And so it starts from having the code and do code analysis. The second stage is doing what we call traffic inspection and inspect the traffic and see what is going on inside the traffic. And the third part is to prefer is a tag simulation where we actually tag the endpoints. And all of those together will give us the best the best protection we have. And if we think about it, it's like having different lenses. Each lens each lens give us a point of view where we see something specific. Okay, if we will watch the code, we'll learn a lot about the code. We might find vulnerabilities. But if we, if we if, yeah, but it's done, it won't give us a full picture. Having the traffic inspection again will give us a narrow thing that we see. That we see, and of course, having the tag simulation, the same combining them together, putting all the lenses, will help us definitely to understand what is going on. For example, if we'll see a code a problem in the code, we can go and search the, the design in all the API that we see in the traffic, and go further and then attack them through the attack simulation and verify if everything is correct or not, and then come back to the team and give them the answer, hey, where you are. But if we'll do only one of them, we'll probably will protect us just from the certain thing that we can see in it. And by remember the things, when we're gonna go and have, look at the study cases, so remember, we have, we're talking about API. It's not a web application. A lot of the things we're going to see here have been uh, when there were a WAF and all the security measures done by the companies. And we'll understand why they haven't been blocked, why they still were vulnerability to the stuff we just talked. So the first study, and if you're going to see on the left, you can see like the which module uh, we used to, and here we have the magnify symbolize the traffic inspection. We went to a company and just asked us, hey, can you please do, uh, we, want, we want to test the tool, we want to see what is going on. So we connected our traffic inspection and saw in our code and code analysis. So when we talk on the code analysis, they connect their inventories so we can understand exactly how many API they expecting to see. So they were expected to see X API because that's what they have in the in, had in the inventory. But when we went to the traffic inspection and analyzed the traffic, we saw that they have like 30 API that they weren't aware of and more than 400 endpoints that they didn't think that existing. And when we look at something like that from a CISO perspective or a security perspective, the hard, the the most, the hardest things that gives the the most thing that gives the CISO and security perspective and security guys headache are the things that they don't know. If you know that you're vulnerable in one point, you can say, okay, I can compromise it. Okay, if I have, if I have, a, if I have a SIG, I can put a WAF, I can put something in the DMZ, I can try to find a solution until I will fix it. But the things that we don't know about them are the things that we cannot do anything. We cannot manage it, we cannot protect it. So having more than 30 a API and more than 400 endpoints exposed, exposed them, ex can expose a company because they, be, they will never know it. So we went to the code analysis, we saw how many APIs they're, they're expecting to see, and then we compared it to the actual traffic we saw. So this is the one, one of, for one of the API I even had um, was in front of a data as a customer database and didn't have any authentication, meaning someone can abuse it and take the API, just take out all the information of that specific customer. And another thing was they didn't have any rate limit. And we were able to, they had an OTP and we were able just to take the OTP and try to guess it by doing brute force. And we need to understand OTP is the one, is the thing that we say, okay, if I have OTP and I need to put uh, four digits or six digits, 
So if someone will get my username and password, they will never be able to go there to get in because they will need the code. So this is bypassing it. If I if if we were able to get the username and password, we'll be able to take control of the account. But the main key that I want us to get it to to have from this slide is thinking that if we will inspect our code will be enough. So the answer is no. Probably everyone who ever had experience with API can tell you that probably 100% there's some API that we don't aware of. And, not aw and when we are not aware of API, meaning we don't patch it, we don't support it, and they're just there and someone can take control and abuse us with that. Second stage case study is we went to a customer and again, we, we put our, our engines and started to traffic the, and we started to go through the code and inspect the traffic. And here we saw something very, very funny. If on the first one we saw too many APIs, so we saw here some API that they weren't aware of, something like double, but the funny, not the funny thing, but the key point is not that they had more APIs than we expected that. They had APIs that we saw in the code that were different version, like API version 5, API version 5.2, 5.3, and go on. And when we inspected the traffic, we saw that everybody uses the, la the last API version and nobody used the old version. And they just had, and they were just exposing themselves to the world. And they thought, okay, we are using the, the new API, the new version. And they didn't, ta they, they didn't do anything with the old version. And by reducing, so we came back to them and said, hey, from like 10 APIs, eight of the API are old version. By removing them, automatically reduced the risk by 80%. Think how, how, how about the impact that you come back to the company or come to the system and say, hey, you can reduce 80% of the API because they're just different version. And it's not, okay, we sometimes see versions that people use. Maybe you have a version for the mobile, version for web application, different platform, different API. In their case, no one used it. And how we knew that? Because we took time, a time period of a month, we inspect the traffic, we inspect the traffic, and we saw that no one used, used, used those API. So we pretty much call them the zombies API because they're dead API, no one used them, but they're still there and still expose us to the world. That's okay, third study, third case. Okay, so the first case was too many APIs that w nobody was aware of. Second one that by inspecting the code, we can reduce APIs that are necessary. Here we did the code, the code review, the code analysis, and we saw that there is a potential BOLAs going there. BOLA is like broken object level authorization. And by changing the UID or something like that, we can try and access different resources and different resources. So we found that. And we didn't came to the team yet and I told them, hey, you have potential BOLA and 85 API, let's start work on it and, and go on. We went to our attack, to our, sorry, we went to our second tool, to our traffic inspection, thought, hey, we saw the problem in the code. How we can leverage it using the traffic inspection. So we took the pattern and the thing that we saw in the code and went on all the API they had and started to search and where do they have more API that uses the same, the same problem, the same code, and expose themselves to the same vulnerability. And we didn't stop there. We said, okay, we saw the problem in the code, we saw the problem in the attack simulation. Let's try and actually perform it. And so and uh, go so, and go and to the section simulation, try to exploit it and see if we actually get those data and find our vulnerability. We have to say we were on a test slash QA environment 
and we did much much before production so there weren't a lot of traffic however we still we were still able to manage and to and do stuff and identify things and the only thing that pretty much prevented it we went to we went back to them and they had code analysis manually done by someone from their team and, and it found it found the bug before we we came back to them and alert them and it fixed it but we all know that human do a lot of errors and this is why we are humans but if you weren't able to detect that and in, in real time they will be could go could go to production have it and fix things in production it's much much harder much complicated to fix things that are going on and a lot of time we fix one thing and create another hole and then we go back and forth and try to figure it out everything uh, so this is on this one and the last one is very interesting we we had a bank not from the US but if you will compare it to the US banks it's probably gonna be in the top 50 bank banks and and managing 75 billion pretty nice bank and they had as I said everything every security measure you you, you think about if it's the WAF it's a firewall if penetration testing every every once in a while uh, seam sock monitoring 24/7. And then they told us, hey, we, we want to challenge you if you're really, if you can really find something. And we, we accepted the challenge. And the result that you're going to see here are after about 48 hours, we told them, hey, guys, pretty much game over. And you will see that and we'll understand why. So we want to, we, when we came to them, we wanted to find and exploit a lot of business, a lot of business logical, because we knew that probably they have, they done from their side the best, the best security that can be. Okay, they their banks. They doing all what the regulation requires, and we wanted to slip in using the things that none of the security uh, tools and platform will find and identify. So keep it that in mind, and let's see how we did it. So we used several of findings. And combining them together, we did the attack. So the, so just the start of the, the start of the attack. Okay, we didn't start it anonymous. We got an account in the in the bank. We got a bank account. We got a user, a regular user, not something special. And we started to look and look and look, and we investigated that that change the exchange rate, all that area, and we found a few things. We found that they're not that they are enforcing minimum mi minimum uh, fee for for in the account. I mean, like you, you can't do exchange on one point one zero point zero 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 for the currency. Okay, you need to have some amount, and it was enforced on the client side. Okay, meaning we when you use it directly with the API, we were able to bypass the minimum fee the minimum. They, they, they set it up. The second thing is, of course, they had the fees on everything, on every action that you do. And we were able, again, to do uh, multiple um, things in the account. And we didn't have any fees against them because it wasn't forced on the client side and not on the API. They didn't have a um, rate limit, we'll call it, but from where their perspective as a bank, they pretty much want you to do as much transactions as you want because for each transaction, they get money. So from their side, they said, we don't see, uh, we don't understand why we need to do a rate limit because we want to earn a lot of the, as much money as we can. So it was kind of mitigated by the fees, but we, as I said, we were able to bypass the fees using the direct the API. And the fourth thing is they had a rounding up system. And let's say if their the currency is 0 0.5155552, so they will round up to 0 0.55. Okay, they have they took the sixth that the sixth last digit and round up everything. So let's see how, and all of this is by, is, does he, does he, the design of the application, design of the system, 
nothing special so far. Okay, we found a lot of small things. Let's see how combining everything leverage us and uh, we got like, I, I won't spoil it, but we did a lot of money this time. So about the minimum, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, it tells us, hey, you need to have some amount of money above something in order to do so. But using the IPI directly, we're able to bypass it. And as, okay. The second thing is, you can see that we didn't, we did exchange in the money, we did some sale. Right above it, we can see the fee that went down. So that's okay. Above that, you can see a request we did through the API directly, and we didn't get any, they didn't reduce any fee from us because it would have had been directly. So, so far, okay, it's not fun, it's not nice, but probably the bank won't notice anything so far. And remember, they had everything. And we talk about why the WAF won't notice it because everything is legit. The request is legit. We didn't do anything. We didn't compromise nothing. We just use it directly, bypassing a lot of protections. Okay, and again about the rounding up. And we'll go on the rounding up deeper. You can see actually we did some sell and we earned money. And it's not a lot of money, it's 0 0.02 Canadian dollars, but small amount of money. Not rich, not fun. So we found that, and then we thought, hey, let's think big. Let's find a great, cur a great currency exchange and think where we can do the most of the money, and then see if we can do it on a large scale and see how large scale we can do. And maybe earn some money. So we started to investigate on the currency from US dollars to Canadian dollar. The rate wasn't good. We didn't have any, any round for, for us. We tried from here in the United States and at that time every, the market just went up, down every second. So it didn't help us. It's from, from US dollars to Australian dollars, didn't good. But then we found from, from Canadian dollars to quid. That gave us a wiggle of 0 0.02, rounding up. And we started to work on that currency. So think about it. Every, every request we will do to the server, he will pretty much, that we will exchange one and he will give us X story 0 0.02 in the currency. How it look, and it looked like this. Okay, and the POC will see We started, this is a Python, Python script. We started with 10 cell then um, Canadian dollars. And we did that, and we did the exchange back and forth every time, every time, every time. We didn't have any rate limit because the bank wants you to do currency, to do, to do the exchange. They do a lot of money by that. And remember, everything is valid. Everything is good. And as you can see, sorry, we started with 10,000 pounds and started converting it to Canadian dollars, back and forth, back and forth. And as I said, no one noticed it. We did it directly, so we didn't, had, we didn't have any fees. We didn't, knew, we didn't need to do any. We did every time for one, and it will go on and go on. And we will see, you think we started, we stopped at 20, no. It went up. So if I will ask you, hey, what actually is the problem is, okay, you talk about a lot of API security, and I said, this finding is not the small thing we saw. It's logical bypass. Okay, if I will ask you what is a logical bypass, you say, I don't know, how, how do I summarize logical bypass? It's something very hard because we went to the business, we investigate the business, and then we found it. And as I, as I said, this is happening after 48 hours, when all the bank, when they know that we are testing them, they are alerting about it, they know, they told the security team, hey, we are, we're doing a, we're doing a, we're doing a, a research against us, be aware of it. And we went to them and asked them, and it will get in, and, but we did like, we started from 10,000, here we are in 82, but we'll finish probably at 70,000. 
uh, pounds. And we started in 10,000. And we came back to the team and, and we asked him a few questions. One, anybody, uh, did anyone saw this happening in real time? The answer was no. And remember, it's a bank. They have, they have seen, they have sock, everything they have. They have everything, 20, monitor 24-7. So the first, for the first answer, have you, have you noticed it's in real time? No. So the second question was, okay, in real time, how long it will take or how much money do you need to lose? And then you will see, the, and then you will see it. And the answer was about, okay, we finish it. Uh, we'll skip about it, but I think you got the idea of it. So pretty much we printed money, and, and afterwards it came to, okay, don't forget to pay on the POV, and it said, I think we already got paid for it. But they didn't like the joke. Uh, so we went to the, of course, every bank has a fraud, a fraud system against that they work that makes sure that people don't steal money. And they said, and they told us, that they told us, not us, they did an internal, internal uh, investigation they will lose $10 million until they will be aware of it. And they won't be aware of it from the security system, so from the security tools, okay? They'll be aware of it from the fraud that someone stole $10 million, okay? And as I said, because everything was legit, we didn't do anything, we didn't insert excess uh, payload, we didn't do CSRA, of course, of course, or whatever you think about it. But as I said, by exploiting the business logical and trying to go in the wiggle it, we found it. And we see it a lot in API because API communicates with so many different servers. And each one has different logical and different data and different expectation of, of behavior. It, it's, uh, it's not easy, but every, it, it there's. And as I said, there's all the blind spots that we have the inventory that we think we know and manage, and there's things that just slip in and out without our awareness. And the logical is really hard to enforce when you have so many uh, communication. And as I said, they had everything, as you can see here on the slide. And the only thing that will stop us in real time is someone will see, hey, the bank lost a lot of money. And think about it. If, if you want to do it in a large scale, okay, so you can create 100 accounts, exploit all of them together, and probably it will take time. Because, and we did it just from one account. Of course, we didn't do it, but still nice guys. So from our perspective, as I said, we see uh, our approach to, to defense is to have 30, the 33 degrees when starting with uh, code analysis. Analysis the code, make sure that everything is good, everything is correct. Go to the traffic. And by having those two legs, we can do a lot of comparison. And about that, we can do inspection of the behavior. If, we, if let's say, someone uses the API five times a day, and then we're gonna see it raising up to 500 times a day. Maybe if we have even a, a WAF with rate limit or balancer, it won't be detected because it's a legit, but from our side, it's still a behavior, a suspicious behavior. And this is just one example. And we can do um, a behavior analysis about um, the, the, the type of data that usually go, go in, goes in and data goes out and things like that. So having those, those two legs on the, on the code, on the traffic, we can do a lot of comparison and, and help. And of course, the third layer is actually perform those attacks against those API and endpoints and ensure that we are really protected and we are good to go. And of course, because we have the, all the data about the libraries, the framework we works, and et cetera, we can provide the best feedback back to the team and don't just give them a lot of list of problems and tell them, hey, take those problems. And if you're from the security side or 
provide the security side some information. Uh, as 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 I said, I, as an attacker, we always try to provide um, what is the problem, what do we understand from the problem. Okay, we can do. We find we found that you, there is Bola, but this Bola can provide us all the information of the organization, or can we can access pictures of people? Okay, different impact. And the third key is, okay, what do we need to do next? Do we need to shut down? We need to fix it. How to fix it? So if if we just provide list of problems, uh, a lot of people do. First of all, for them, but make sure that you, you get what is the problem, what is the impact of a problem, and what should we do next? So this was my. So this pretty much my speech and. I guess we all read news and see the attacks and problems that happen to organization. And yeah, it's not fun to be in the newspaper that everybody reads that you had a breach and you were compromised. And not fun. And wish you would never be there in that case and all the good cases. So any questions that someone has, want to ask, want to know? Okay, great. Still, if you have, we are here. No, oh, yes. They fix that security vulnerability. No, they expose it. You can now. No, of course. <laughs> I can tell you, I moved. I moved. I moved the bank afterwards, but no. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, of course uh, they fix it. Re when it comes to money, companies work really fast. Okay. If it's not money, okay, we'll put it in the next quarter. Let's talk about it. When it comes to money. First thing in the morning. When it comes to that final um, example you had, was that something that your tool could pick up automatically, or is that something that you were able to detect through manually testing and analyzing? So all, our tool, is, all our tool is automatically okay. None of the thing is done manually, and the answer is yes. It will be able to detect it in in real time. And and the more we know about the business, the more it's going to live and understand the, the network and the, the operation and the thing in the business. And when I'm saying the business, are the, the assets, the players, the action we are we expecting to see. And this is standing on the, the player, okay, and on the action. We expect to see action happening, okay. We don't expect to see something like that sending over and over repeatedly. 10,000 of time, okay? Going from 10,000 10, quid to more than 70,000, okay? And so the answer is yes. We, we, as I said, we inspect the behavior because we expect what the data is supposed to go in and go out. And then, yes, we can detect that. And as I said, standard as WAF and other API gateway are not designed to find those flaws. Okay, they're to do. They're supposed to do other different things. If you have an application, use WAF. It's a great tool. I, I, it's. I won't say 100%. I we by, bypassed a lot of WAF in my days, but better than nothing. And they they do a good job. <laughs>